with Professor Paul Knopfler here at UC Davis School of Medicine. I'm a stem cell biologist, but I also run a blog called The Niche, uh, which is a resource site as well as being a blog. And then as part of that, I'm also doing a series of videos about stem cells and trying to fact check stem cells. So today's video is part of that fact checking effort. And the focus is on these cells called MSCs. They seem to be most well known by this acronym MSC. Uh, it's not really clear what that acronym means these days. There's a lot of debate about it, uh, but I'll go ahead and share my screen now and you can see um, a recent post I did about MSCs and we can kind of go through it together. So here again is my site, The Niche, uh, and you can see there's the blog, but there's all these other resources um, for scientists and patients. So please check it out. It's at ipsl.com. And like I said, uh, as part of this, I'm doing this whole series of stem cell videos uh, to educate people. So MSCs is the focus of today's talk. So MSCs in a broad sense, maybe we can most accurately define them as mesenchymal cells. And this just kind of refers to their developmental uh, origin. But MSCs over the last 15 or so years have uh, really been called by many different names and that's actually kind of important. So some people call MSCs mesenchymal stem cells. Um, and this, this has generally been thought to be giving people the wrong idea because in fact, most preparations of MSCs, whether it's from fat or bone marrow or some other kinds of tissues like umbilical cord. Uh, in fact, when you get your tube out, your test tube, and you've got a little pellet of cells in the bottom, very few of those are actually stem cells. And you know, if you go to the trouble, like some of the research labs that are really intensively studying MSCs to do what's called fact sorting, so you can kind of sort out cells into different subpopulations based on their properties, you can actually get fairly pure populations of mesenchymal stem cells uh, from your little pellet, but almost nobody does that, uh, especially not in the clinical setting. And so I think it's really important that we not broadly think of these as just stem cells, because in fact, there could be as many as a dozen or more different kinds of mesenchymal, and in fact, even other kinds of cells uh, in there. So the name is actually really important. So here's this post. Uh, here's an actual picture of these cells from my own lab. So these are human uh, mesenchymal cells or MSCs. And you can see each one of these little units is, is a cell. The round thing is a nucleus. The darker thing inside of there is this thing called the nucleolus that's important for uh, protein production for cells. So you can see these cells have kind of a spindly appearance. If you look around in a field of these cells enough, you'll see that they, they actually can look pretty different from each other. And I think that kind of reflects that heterogeneity. I was mentioning that, in fact, um, there are other kinds of cells in there. So I've already sort of introduced this idea of the, you know, a little bit of a debate over the, the acronym MSC. There's sort of a history there. Um, and, and let me just kind of go into how these cells are made, and we'll get a little bit more into the debate over the acronym. So MSCs are typically isolated uh, from fat tissue or bone marrow or umbilical cord. Those are the three main sources these days. In theory, you can probably get them from other sources as well. So there's a lot of debate also, not only over the name, but also like, oh, are MSCs from fat better than those from bone marrow or umbilical cord MSCs better? And it really just depends on the tissue you're starting with, the quality of that, the methods you're using, the training of the people who are preparing them. So there's a lot of ways that this can kind of go wrong and you can kind of end up with junk in the tube. And this is really important, especially in this sort of unproven stem cell clinic sphere. They not only oftentimes characterize MSCs as just stem cells, uh, which I think is, is really not fair to patients because generally, again, they're not really stem cells most of the time. Um, but also they kind of exaggerate what the MSCs can do because they're trying to sell them to people, right? So um, anyhow, I don't know that there's really a best type of tissue to get MSCs from. I'm sure that there are different properties of say fat MSCs versus bone marrow MSCs. And again, um, just because someone calls something MSCs, it doesn't really mean um, that they're MSCs. Uh, one of the more common preparations that sometimes is uh, pitched as being MSCs is a fat preparation. So people do a liposuction procedure, get out a tube of fat. Uh, it's really globby and stuff. And so they do a bunch of different processing steps to get rid of all the fat and, and kind of purify out the cells in there. 
and they're claiming that these are MSCs. Really, you know, maybe some of them might be. Some are probably blood cells. Some are other kinds of cells, like blood vessel cells. Literally, the cells that are in the wall of the blood vessel, because there's a lot of blood vessels and fat. There are probably other immune cells in there. So really, even the clinics themselves oftentimes don't really know what they're injecting you with when they're talking about using these fat preparations or MSCs. So uh, you have to be really careful about that. Let's see. Um, yeah, I've already kind of gone over, you know, some, some people are much more careful about working with mesenchymal cells, like we'll do this fact sorting to get out only certain populations of those cells. Some biotechs are doing that. You know, and that's really rigorous, much more legit kind of stuff than what the stem cell clinics are doing. So I've also kind of gone through this question, like what are these mesenchymal cells? You know, uh, what should the acronym stand for? It's, it's hard because for instance, I went, you know, if you do a PubMed search, so PubMed is a database of biomedical research articles that anybody can, can look at. So Pub could even stand for public. Uh, I think it stands for publications um, in PubMed, but I found 1200 publications. So there's a lot of back and forth. Um, one particular researcher thinks that MSC, the acronym, can now stand for medicinal signaling cells because some uh, articles suggest that MSCs secrete a lot of stuff that influence other cells. Uh, I think medicinal signaling is too sort of uh, sort of uh, aspirational a term because medicinal suggests that it's known that these cells are always going to do something that's like medicine or helpful. Yeah, really, we don't know that, and and MSCs. You know what they secrete uh, could be helpful, helpful for say type A cells, but not type C cells that you're trying to work with, or for you know one medical condition but not another medical condition. So it really boils down to data uh, and how much data you've got. So I mentioned 1,200 publications. There's probably even more than that. That was just one literature search I did. We can also kind of gauge the overall MSC clinical sphere by how many clinical trials are ongoing. And here's just a map I generated on uh, this database called clinicaltrials.gov where you can search for uh, different clinical trials. So I tried to kind of get a sense of where in the world different trials are going on. So again, if you wanna check this out, um, I've dropped the link in the description of this video if you wanna to come to this post and check out this map or any more of the information. I do think that there's huge potential here <clears throat> for MSCs. But again, it really depends on the rigor. And I think you have to do it the way, um, you have to be really careful the way that a lot of biotechs are doing it and being careful and getting to know your cells, being cautious about not hyping things. So, um, you know, there's a lot of worrying, uh, worry about hype over MSCs and mesenchymal cells that kind of clouds the more promising, the legit promising stuff that's going on with these cells. So. Unfortunately, there's so much hype from so many of these stem cell clinics that I sometimes almost play around with this idea that, in fact, what they really think MSC stand for is magic stem cells. And of course, there's no such thing as magic stem cells. MSCs can't cure everything. They can't always be safe for everybody. And so, you know, you might go to a typical stem cell clinic website and you can see, oh, they're claiming MSCs can treat, you know, like 20 different conditions. Some of these conditions have nothing to do with each other. You know, why would fat mesenchymal cells or bone marrow mesenchymal cells or umbilical cord cells be able to treat basically almost anything you can think of? And, and again, I think it really comes back, you know, this magical stem cell or magic stem cell idea for these clinics really comes back to them wanting to sell, 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 you know, just get the cells out there, get as much money as they can. They don't put a lot of money for the most part in characterizing their cells. Uh, as I said earlier, some of them really don't even know what's in the syringe, you know, in terms of cell biology and stuff um, that they're injecting people with. They're just sort of thinking it's magic, you know, and, and kind of portraying it that way. So uh, it's sort of a, a two-sided field out there. There's all this legit, you know, I would say interesting and potentially exciting research on MSCs. And then there's all these clinics. And unfortunately, there's so many of these clinics now that they kind of take over the conversation sometimes. And in fact, that's part of the reason I'm doing these videos is, is to help patients get a better sense, uh, understanding of the real deal of what's going on out there. So here at the end of the post, I have some references you can check out if you navigate over there. 
Again, the topic of today's video was sort of these MSCs or magic stem cells. Some people say, I think, you know, responsible people are more careful about that. Um, they maybe call them mesenchymal stromal and stem cells. And they're looking to data to tell them what these cells can really do and what they can't do. So that was our video today. If you like it, please subscribe and check out our other videos and I'll talk to you later.